Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we had a great event last night, um, Georgia Carolinas, hosted by Dave and uh, Nicole Tepper. Uh, it was over uh, 2,500 kids and their families, so uh, outstanding event. And I just wanted to make sure uh, that I definitely uh, acknowledge Dave and Nicole for their hard work uh, within this community. Uh, great practice today. Uh, I thought the guys did an excellent job just with the tempo, sense of urgency, uh, again, another day with Wednesday with the pads on and uh, excited where we are. Long way to go. Uh, definitely going to be a tough task uh, in Seattle. Twelfth uh, man, loud crowd, uh, definitely a different atmosphere. But uh, with that, I'll take your questions. A couple of guys on the injury report. Was, was it more of a rest day for Foreman or is he, is he somebody you're concerned about? Uh, not really concerned about uh, him. Uh, you know, he did have that foot. I had an opportunity to be able to heal up uh, over the uh, bye week. And, and again, uh, we'll see exactly where he is tomorrow. Would you anticipate him practicing tomorrow, or do you not know yet? I don't know yet. Steve, how close would, would Henry Anderson be to playing? Uh, it really just depends on, on his uh, progress. You know, So we cleared him today, as you know. Uh, he looked good moving around. Uh, he'd been doing some other things before he hit the field today. So uh, we'll see exactly where he is uh, the latter part of the week. Is there any update? Any chance for this weekend? Uh, I'm hoping so. Is there uh, any update on Andre Roberts? I know he's still on injured reserve, but is that still a possibility? Uh, as of right now, no. No update on him. Um, hey Steve, Gino Smith has really kind of resurrected his career in, in Seattle. When you look and evaluate him, what is it maybe that he's doing now that's better than his you know, initial run with in, in the league with the Clippers? Uh, it, it's, again, guys, it's always hard for me to try to compare uh, what they've done in the past. I can speak on, on his performance now, and he's playing at an elite level. You know, some considered him to be in the runnings for the MVP. You know, so uh, I think he's doing a tremendous job in orchestrating and running that offense. Um, they do a great job of moving it outside the pocket. The one thing I see that he does well is that when he gets outside, he's not looking to run. You know, he still got, has his eyes down the field and trying to make that uh, that throw. So you, you talked about the crowd noise. Is there anything that you guys have to do differently for this particular road game, uh, communication wise? Well, we started today just with the crowd noise and really trying to ramp it up uh, throughout practice, particularly while the offense. Uh, was on the field as well as special teams. So uh, they're going to have to do a great job of just communicating, you know, uh, really getting in there tight and making sure that we have our nonverbal communications as well. So that's always a tough place to play. They do a great job uh, with the crowd and really, you know, those guys getting into it. So we just got to be focused and locked in. Steve, Ben worked with uh, Gino uh, with the Giants. Can, is there uh, any, any help that he can give you from a tendency standpoint? When you guys are game planning? Not so much a tendency standpoint. He did express how smart he was and how well he reached defenses. It's been a while since the Panthers have played a meaningful, truly meaningful December game. Is that something you guys have talked about, you've reached on, or that you think about it in regards to, like, is there a different feeling that it's now December and it matters? Uh, you know, our approach has always been the next game, you know, and uh, you want to play your best football in December. That's always been the case. And this is an opportunity for us to go against what many consider to be a playoff team, which I feel they are as well, uh, on the road, hostile environment, and see exactly how we pair up. Following up on that, Steve, is this now, I know you go week by week, day by day, but are you guys almost in your own kind of playoff mode <coughs> after playing for? I, I think you have to be, you know, and that's the reason why we talk somewhat about a playoff mentality, particularly going into a playoff environment. And, you know, it's all about us. We're not worrying about the outside noise and, and, and what happens in other games uh, because, to be honest, we got to make sure that we win. And, and as long as we're doing that, taking it one day at a time and trying to win the day, we'll see where we are in the end. You use that phrase, playoff mentality. Where do you see that? What does that look like? Uh, what does it look like? It's just uh, a high level of focus, you know, and understanding the sense of urgency that you have to have uh, once you get to the playoffs. Are, are we there yet? But no, we're trying to create that mindset. Um, some of the guys, and I think you mentioned it before too, you've used videos.
to kind of motivate the guys and just remind them of the, the tenacity and, and the intensity that you're expecting. Have you shown them the playoff win over the Seahawks as you prepare to go out there this week? Didn't show them the, uh, the playoff win, but I did talk about 2015 when we came off a bye uh, and we went out there and played them. We were down in the fourth quarter, two scores, uh, and, and, and found a way to win the football game. So, uh, you know, same logos, two different teams, uh, same, same mindset for us going out there, coming off a bye, and trying to come away with a win. Do you view this as a must win? I don't view it as a must win. I, I view it as a win that we want. Uh, we want to win every game. So I'm not going to put it in a situation to where it's do or die here. You know, uh, we still got a lot of football left. Coach, when you look at them defensively, they're given a lot of yards but have a, a ton of takeaways. Um, how would you describe that? Uh, I, I talked about that this morning. I think they're very talented defensively. You know, uh, guys up front, Woods being one of the uh, top guys there. Uh, Diggs, you know, one of the top safeties in this league. They still got Bruce Irvin there is playing at a high level. Uh, and they have found a way to generate and create takeaways. The second in the league, I believe, with 21. So uh, we got to do a great job right here protecting the football. They're not so good in the run defense um, coming into this game. There's a huge area of opportunity there for you guys. When you've been able to establish the run, it makes it a lot easier on the quarterbacks and you have a higher degree of success. Um, with Foreman nursing a foot injury, do you think you'll approach it differently? Will we see K Mays in the backfield or is that something you can't really share with us just yet? Well, uh, I mean, it's no secret that I, I believe everything we do starts up front and I think you have to have a good run game uh, to be able to be successful. Uh, I know guys like to spread it out and throw the ball around, and we're going to do whatever it takes to win football games, and that's what we need to do. We will, but uh, I believe in establishing the run, and, and, and everything we do, as I said before, stops up front, and then off that we'll create you know different elements of how we can attack them. With uh, Kenneth Walker uh, hit up in the air, how how do you guys prepare to, to face that run? Well, uh, I, I think they have all the quality running backs as well. You know, we talked about it. Regardless who's back there, we got to stop the run. We got to try to find a make, find a way to make them one dimensional. And as I mentioned all year, uh, you're not going to stop quarterbacks in this league from getting their yardage in the passing game. But when they're running and passing the ball, it's a long day for you. So we got to stop the run early. Your reaction on uh, Baker landing in LA. Uh, Kudos to Baker, you know, as I said before, um, professional and everything that he did while he was here, uh, only wishing him nothing but the best. And, uh, you know, hopefully he succeeds out there. How is Darnold looking at practice coming off the bye? I thought he looked uh, pretty good today. Uh, again, moving around, throwing the ball well. Uh, again, you know, really trying to operate the offense under the conditions with the uh, crowd noise. So uh, I thought he did a pretty good job today. What's the message for a guy like him since you guys are kind of in that constant look for a quarterback as far as you can resurrect your career after not being the starter for a long time? Uh, I mean, again, just, you know, I, I compliment him in the way he's, you know, progressed over his career. Had You know, many would say he, he, he had an up and down career, but I think he's playing phenomenal right now. And, um, you know, what it a factor of, could it be him, could it be the scheme, could it be the coaches, and so many other things that I don't know. But uh, uh, he's playing at a high level and doing a great job for them. Is your, uh, I think I heard this, is your intention to go out there Saturday as opposed to Friday? I know some teams will go out. Saturday, going out Saturday, yes. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I've experienced this many times, you know, being here before, going out there early, uh, Friday, uh, going out there on a Saturday. I think it's just best to keep the same routine and uh, we'll get there uh, and still have curfew at 9 o'clock, which will be 12 hour time and just be ready to rock and roll the next day. This year has been quite a whirlwind with just a lot of stuff and kind of mental games, if you will, in that locker room, whether it be a new head coach and Christian being gone, then Robbie being gone. And does the bye week give everybody a chance to kind of get their feet underneath them, especially with the reset of the calendar in December and, and the final push of the season? For you? I, I think it does in so many other ways, just beyond uh, what I consider to be the it factors sometimes throughout the season. It's just really an opportunity for us to heal and recharge mentally. Uh, I think our guys have done a tremendous job of really handling uh, 
uh, not allowing it to get in the way. Well, and whatever it may be, as I talk about all the time, could be the things that you just mentioned. Uh, it could be weather. Uh, it could be all kinds of stuff outside in their personal life. Uh, we got to find ways to be professionals, uh, to refocus, and, you know, come and do our job. So uh, these guys have done a tremendous job of really blocking out those things and uh, performing well. So I'm looking forward to this opportunity that we're going to have on Sunday. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.